In today's video, we will see how to create an item. Usually, to create an item master, I need to create a table, which I have already done. The item table includes an item ID. So I will create a trigger to automatically generate the item ID. We can see the structure of a trigger. This trigger is called trg underscore pm underscore item underscore ID. It works before inserting data into the pm underscore item table. What does it do? If you don't provide any value for item underscore ID, the trigger will automatically create one in this format. ITM 00001, ITM 00002, ITM 00003, and so on. How it works. First, it checks whether the item underscore ID is empty. Then, it retrieves the highest number from the existing item underscore IDS in the table. It adds one to that number. Finally, it creates a new ID like ITM00025 using that number and assigns it to a new dot item underscore ID. So, you don't have to enter the item ID manually. It will be automatically generated in the correct format. Now, we will create a form to add a new item. Since I'm using a trigger to generate the item underscore ID, I will keep this field hidden as well. Just like in the previous form, we will keep the SS underscore creator and created underscore on columns hidden and insert data into them automatically. Now we will add an owner list under the item. To do that, we need to create a detail grid form. But before that, we have to create a table. I'm creating this table for storing owner details. Now, I will create an interactive grid. In this grid, I will select the owner table. The grid has been created. Now, I will establish a relationship between the form and the grid so that it maintains a master detail structure. First, I'm enabling the grid to be editable. After enabling it, a process has been automatically created. Now, I'll write some code inside the grid so that we can insert, update, and delete data within it. Here, we can see an example that shows how we can perform insert, update, and delete operations inside the grid. This block handles row actions in Apex Interactive Grid. See Insert New Tenant Owner. You update existing record. D delete record by ID. It uses APX dollar row underscore status to decide which action to perform. Here, instead of the item number, I will use the item value from the form. This item number will help build the relationship between the master and the detail.
Here, I will keep the owner underscore no visible and hide all other columns. We will use a LOV, list of values, inside the grid for the owner. I've already created an owner table where the owner list is stored. So, I'll fetch the owner list from that table and display it here. Now I will insert data into both the master and detail sections to test. I can see that the records have been created, and now I will check in the object browser to confirm whether the data has been inserted. I will add a WHERE condition in the grid so that the detail data is loaded based on the selected form, master, record. Now I will create a report. Then, I'll go into the query and make some changes. Because this table has multiple foreign keys, and I want to use joins with all the related tables together. Here, I used to join so that the name of the user who entered the data appears, fetched from the user table. Now I will create a new button so that we can add a new item. Using this button, we are now able to open the form. On the right side, you can see a filter panel with a search option. If we want, we can add more filters to it as needed. Here, after right-clicking, we can see the Create Facet option. We will click on that. Then, we'll give the facet item a name based on what we want to filter. Next, select the district values. And finally, set display filter as infinity to yes. Now I will link the report with the form so that I can edit existing data. Here, I will set the target page number. After that, I will create a relationship using the primary key on both the report and the form pages. We can see that after clicking on an existing data row, the data is being loaded into the form. I will move the buttons from the master form to the breadcrumb area. I will hide the save buttons from the grid.
In this page, I will set up a breadcrumb so that I can navigate back to the report. I will also apply a condition to this breadcrumb. It will only be visible when item underscore ID is null. We can see that the breadcrumb is visible when creating a new item. But when we go to edit mode, the breadcrumb does not appear. So, we need to create another breadcrumb that will be shown during edit mode. I named the new breadcrumb edit item and included the item ID in it, so that we can see the item ID while editing. For this, I need to set a condition. The condition will be, show this breadcrumb only when item underscore ID is not null. Now, we can see that when we go to edit mode, the item ID is visible in the breadcrumb. And when we go to create a new item, we only see new item. So, the benefit of creating two separate breadcrumbs is that we see a specific name when creating an item and a different one when editing.